Welcome to the Awakening Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Hyatt. So glad you joined me today on this Monday morning. We're beginning a new week. And uh, we're going to be doing a theme, a series of episodes this week on the power of revival. Life-changing, culture-changing revival. I want to read two passages in relation to revival, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. And both of these passages were written in regards to God's people. And in Psalm 84, 6, the psalmist said, and this was a prayer to God, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? And then uh, in the New Testament, Acts chapter 3, verse 19, and this is Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost. He's preaching to God's people. He says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Notice that, that God is the source in both of those passages. He's the source of revival. Wilt the, the prayer in Psalm 84, 6, Wilt thou not revive us? Will you not revive us again, O God? And then here in Acts three nineteen, That times of refreshing may come. From where? From the presence of the Lord. Now, the church needs revival because this is something that happens throughout history. Uh, you know, revivals come again and again, uh, which is the, the ministry of the life and power of the Holy Spirit. But there's a tendency uh, for the life of the Spirit to be replaced with outward external rituals, programs, and formalism. And those things take the place of the inward life and power of the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, the church becomes feckless and powerless to stand in the face of a uh, of an antagonistic culture such as we're facing in the world today. Much of the church today is feckless and powerless in the face of what's called the woke culture today. And that is why we need to see a heaven-sent revival once again. Now, let's begin by defining the word revival. So we're going we're gonna to talk about revival. We're going to pray for revival in your life, in your family, in your home, in your church, in your city, your nation. But let's define the term. What is the meaning of the word revival? Well, revival comes from the French word for life, which is V, V, and then the prefix re, which means again or anew. So re v revival life again. So revival is not for the unsaved. It is not for the the people of the world. Revival is for a church that has become formal, that has become lifeless, that is stuck in a religious rut of external routines and rituals and formalisms without the life and power of the Holy Spirit. And such a church needs re needs life again, needs to have God to come down and breathe His life into their midst again. And you know, th that is why in re what revival is really is just returning us to New Testament Christianity. That's what revival is. Revival is not something, is not just some hyped up religious event. Revival, real revival, is a return to the Christianity and to the life of the New Testament. And when we read the New Testament, when we read the book of Acts, we read the Gospels, we read, read the epistles, if we are not living up to the standards of New Testament Christianity, then we need revival. And you know, when a church is moving in revival, lives are transformed. Even 
Entire communities are transformed. And I will be sharing some personal examples from, from my own life history and also from, uh, from church history that I have studied quite, uh, uh, quite studiously and in depth. But let me just, just mention one story from my own family, testimony I've heard of my father. My father got saved, I'm going to guess probably 1939, 1940. And this was during a time of a Pentecostal revival. Um, he was 26, 27 years old. And um, hey, the Azusa Street Revival was, you know, I, that the, um, uh, the William Seymour's wife pastored it up until I think 1937, somewhere in there, 36, 37. It may still have been even open and going when my dad was saved. I'm just saying that to say that there was a Pentecostal revival that was going on. There was a hungering after God and God was pouring out his spirit. And my dad, who had been a very rough character, uh, went to a revival meeting. It was sort of an outdoor meeting. They called it a brush arbor meeting uh, where they just built a rough tabernacle out of uh, post and uh, uh, limbs and they put limbs over the top and put soda, sawdust on the floor and uh, built a platform, put up some chairs. They put up an altar bench and uh, and they would invite people to come. And this was really used uh, mostly probably in rural areas, especially in the south. And uh, as I said, my dad had been a rough character. Uh, uh, he, When he was 11 years old, his mother died. Uh, he quit school in the fourth grade. He was such an ornery kid that when he was 13, his father kicked him out of the house. And uh, he wound up going to prison at the age of 16. I don't know exactly how, how long he was in prison, but he got out. He met my mother. They got married. Uh, my mother got saved at home. She came under conviction. And I guess somebody had witnessed to her, and she was reading her Bible, and, and she came under conviction, gave her life, and she was praying for my dad. Another thing he had going for him was he had a praying aunt. I still remember her, Aunt Mamie. And uh, she was his mother's sister. And I guess when his mother died, Aunt Mamie tried to take him under wing and made him an object of prayer. Well, there was a revival taking place in the area of Shakota, Texas. The people had built a brush arbor and they had invited a young woman preacher from Oklahoma named Mary Jeffries to come and preach. And this was her first time to preach in an extended revival meeting. In other words, they were going to have services every night. Uh, I don't know how long that revival went on, at least a couple of weeks, maybe three, maybe four. But this particular night, my dad, uh, because he respected uh, his Aunt Mamie, he went with her and Uncle Henry. Now, I still remember Aunt uh, Aunt Mamie and Uncle Henry, and uh, I remember her spirituality. I remember her testifying in church and walking the aisles and waving her arms, and she was actually preaching a sermon. Uncle Henry was much more quiet. Sometimes he didn't even bother going to church. <laughs> you know, he seemed like he was very unspiritual. But anyway, on this particular night, I heard my dad tell this many times. He went with them to this Brush Arbor revival. Aunt Mamie went under the went into the where the seating was under the arbor, and but my dad and Uncle Henry stayed outside the arbor, and they were leaning up against the pickup. They had driven in. There were other men who did not go in under, and they were leaning up against cars or pickups. Now, you can kind of picture this. this is 1939, 1940, and these old cars in their park. Hey, hundreds of people attended this revival meeting, and there's many cars and picks, pickups parked around this, and uh, the, the arbor underneath is full, but there's lots of people leaning up against cars and pickups here in this rural area in northeast Texas. And this young woman preaches a powerful message in the power of the Holy Spirit. And my dad is convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about, folks, life-changing revival. We need a revival that changes hearts and lives. we got to have more than people just joining a church. We've got to have hearts changed, truly born again by the power of God. And my dad was listening to the preaching, and then she was giving an invitation for people to come forward and receive Jesus. And he was under such powerful conviction. And Uncle Henry looked over, and he'd been around Aunt Mamie long enough that he could recognize the Holy Spirit dealing with someone. He looked at my dad, and he saw the Holy Spirit on him. And he said to my dad, Son, 
you may as well go on down there. They're after you. He had heard my Aunt Mamie praying for him. And so my dad went forward, and this was his own testimony and story. I heard it more than once growing up. He said he walked the aisle. He got down to the front. He knelt down at that old rough altar bench. And he said when he knelt down, it seemed that everything disappeared. He wasn't aware of anybody or anything. It was like he wasn't aware of time or anything. And he can't remember anything about what happened when he knelt down. All he remembers is the next thing he knew was he was on his feet and he was clapping his hands and shouting, he did, he did, he did, <laughs> because he had questions before this, wasn't sure if God would save somebody that had been as bad as he was, but oh, God met him, changed his heart, transformed his life, he was never the same, went on to be a successful pastor for many years, because my friends, he didn't just get religion, he got what they, the old timers called a dose of salvation. He got saved in a heaven sent revival, a red hot heaven sent revival. His heart was changed. He was truly born again. A whole new life began. And oh, how we need another church shaking, a church quake. A revival that will change churches, change lives, change communities. That is what we're praying for today. And I'm so glad you've joined me today. And we're going to talk about this more tomorrow. I'm Eddie Hyatt. This is the Awakening Podcast. I've got books on revival on my website, eddiehyatt.com. Check them out. They're also on Amazon. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for another, another episode of the Awakening Podcast. God bless you.